Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1980 Detroit Tigers season replay. Today's matchup is between the California Angels and the Detroit Tigers at Tiger Stadium. Pitching for the Angels today is that son of a bitch, Frank Tanana, whose record is 14-9 with a 3.55 ERA. And pitching for Detroit is Rick Russell, whose record is 9-15, with a 4.83 ERA. And if you don't know why I called Frank Tanana a son of a bitch, uh, it's because uh, he was really mean to me when I was a kid. And I tell this story in a different video in its entirety. I'm not gonna waste your time with it here, uh, but I'll put the video link in the comments below. And if you want to check that story out, that's where you go to find out why Frank Tanana is a son of a bitch. Um, so we won the first game of the three-game series. It was actually somewhat of an uneventful game. Uh, but uh, today is the second game of the four-game series. And we did gain a game back on the Yankees. So we're three and a half back and uh, with a month and a half to go in the season. So I'm feeling like we're still in it. All of our bullpen is available today. Yesterday we had three pitchers who were not available. Uh, and the fact that we stuck it out and made it through that game uh, was kind of a miracle. And here's our lineup. This is against a uh, lefty son of a bitch, Frank Tanana. And uh, let me just check something real quick here. I for can't remember. Okay, I can actually... So... I just want to do a couple quick changes to the lineup. I apologize. I should have prepared this a little bit earlier. Okay. And there we go. Okay. So, yeah, I just wanted to um, rearrange the lineup a little bit. So, um, there we go. So, uh, we have our best players in there against uh, the Angels lefty. Okay. Okay. So that took a moment. I apologize. Uh, so here is the rundown for the California Angels. Batting first and playing second base is Bobby Gritch. Batting second and DHing is Rod Carew. Batting third and playing third base is Carney Lansford. Batting clean up and playing first base is John Harris. Batting fifth and playing shortstop is Steve Lubrach. Batting sixth and in left field is Don Baylor. Batting seventh and in right field is Dan Ford. Batting eighth and catching is Daryl Miller. And batting ninth and in center field is Rick Miller. And on the mound for Detroit is Rick Russell. Take a look here. He's uh, This is his 15th game started for the Tigers. He's got 29 starts overall. He's 5-6 and six with a 4.29 since coming over. Clearly uh, better than he was pitching for the Cubbies. Uh, he has given up 111 hits in 92 innings. Um, and he does have 52 strikeouts in 92 innings. So he's, he's a more of a strikeout pitcher than I anticipated. Um, his the opponents are betting 286 against him, and he has a couple complete games. Uh, he's still looking for that elusive 10th win. This is his third opportunity to get it, so let's see if he can pull it off today. Bobby Gritch leading off. And Gritch grounds it to Trammell. There's one down. Next up is Rod Carew. And Carew strikes out swinging. So it's 1K on the board for Rick Russell, and two down for Cardi Lansford. And Lansford grounds it to Whitaker, and it's a 1-2-3 inning. So we head to the bottom of the first, and here is the lineup for the Tigers. Batting leadoff and playing second base is Sweet Lou Whitaker. Batting second. And at shortstop is Alan Trammell. Batting third and at first base 
is Jason Thompson. Batting cleanup and catching is Lance Parrish. Batting fifth and in left field is Steve Kemp. Batting sixth and in center field is Tony Armis. Batting seventh and in right field is Gary Hancock. Batting eighth and DHing is Carlton Fisk. And batting ninth and playing third base today is Tommy Brookins. And let's take a look at that son of a bitch, Frank Tanana. Um, actually, a really promising career. Um, he was a first-round draft pick of the Angels out of Detroit Catholic Central, which is in Novi, not too far from where I grew up. Um, but uh, he didn't go into the Angels system. He went to Cal Fullerton and pitched there. He's a three-time All-Star. He finished third in the Cy Young in 1976, the year he went uh, 19 and 10. He was a league leader uh, in ERA in 1977 with a 2.54 ERA. And also, he led the league in shutouts with seven. Um, in 1975, he led the league in strikeouts with 269. And then uh, in 81, uh, he was uh, set to be a free agent in 82. And so the Angels traded Tanana to Boston for Fred Lynn. And that's about the time that he started having some problems with his arm. It really started in, in uh, 1979, but he pitched through it. And then by the time uh, he had his one year in Boston, he signed a free agent a contract with the Rangers, which didn't do so well. Um, and then in 1985, the year after the Tigers won the World Series, Frank Tanana was traded to Detroit midway through the season for a bag of balls, basically. It was some minor leaguer who never made it to the majors. But uh, Frank Tanana did end up getting 96 wins as a Detroit Tiger. He was once um, listed as California's most eligible bachelor. And uh, Frank Tanana, he became a born-again Christian, which is how I met him. And he uh, basically uh, claims that his life got back on track after... Um, the death, uh, the murder of Lyman Bostock, his teammate. And so a couple other really quick, interesting things about Frank Tanana. Um, he pitched the very first game in the Kingdom and in New, Com New Comiskey Park. And both he, uh, games were shutouts. Um, he also pitched the last game in Memorial Stadium uh, at Baltimore. And then I thought this was actually really kind of crazy. Uh, today's matchup, Tanana versus Russell. They are the only two pitchers in Major League history to give up a home run to Hank Aaron and to Barry Bonds. And here they are pitching in the same game today. So, a neat coincidence. Having said that, let's crush this son of a bitch. Here's Sweet Lou leading off. And I like that. Thank you, Lou, with the home run to lead off the game. Lou, you're my favorite player now for the Tigers. Wow, that's awesome. So, one to nothing, Detroit. And Trammell rips it down the left field line. And there's a double for Trammell. So back-to-back -back extra base hits. And uh, we have a runner in scoring position for Thompson, who has been hitting lefties better lately. He's up to 225. I guess he just needed a chance as he, wow, gets a ground ball past the third baseman, Lansford. And that's another double for Detroit. It's 2 to nothing on the RBI double. And it's... Um, <laughs> It's two to nothing. I'm just laughing to myself because I did not anticipate uh, this, but we'll take it. And then Parrish shoots it to left field, and it's caught by Baylor. And uh, we know Thompson does not have speed. So even against a below average outfielder like Don Baylor, uh, that would be too risky. So uh, Steve Kemp is up next with one out, Thompson on second. And Thompson pulls it to first. Uh, that, I mean, Kemp pulls it to first, and Thompson makes it to third. So two down, Thompson at third base, and here's Tony Armas, who's 5 for 15 this season against Tanana with a home run. That was in his time with the A's. And Armas grounds it to third, and that is the final out of the inning. So the Tigers take a 2-0 lead on the home run by uh, Whitaker, 
and then back-to-back -back doubles. And uh, John Harris, who made his season debut yesterday, leads off against Russell. And he grounds out to Thompson at first, so one down. Here's Steve Lubrach, who gets a base hit just past Whitaker. So runner at first, one down. Don Baylor's up next. And Baylor grounds it to short. That should be a double play. It is to end the inning. Tigers turn two. We head to the bottom of the second. And Gary Hancock leading off. Gary Hancock has a 12-game hitting streak right now, the longest of the season. And he grounds it right at the second baseman, Bobby Gritch. And there's one down. Next up is Carlton Fisk, batting 341 versus lefties, and there's a base hit to right. So Fisk is on first for Tommy Brookins, who had a home run just a few games ago. And he strikes out swinging. That's the first K for Tanana. So two down. Here's Sweet Lou. And Lou's going to go two for two with the base hit to right. Fisk coasts into third, standing up. And it's first and third for Trammell, who had a double in the first inning. And he's going to hit a little fly ball to center, and that will be the third out. So to the top of the third, Dan Ford leads off. Ford had a home run in yesterday's game off of Jim Bibby. And here he grounds it to first. And that's one down. Jim Bibby got his... Uh, League leading 15th win yesterday, tied for the league lead, as Daryl Miller, the catcher, grounds it to second. There's two outs. Next up is Rick Miller, and Miller grounds it to Brookins at third, and that's a 1-2-3 inning. We go to the bottom of the third, 2 nothing Detroit, Thompson leading off, Tanana at 41 pitches, and Thompson pops it up on the infield, just beyond second base. Oh, and... The shortstop drops it, an error on Lubrach, and we have a runner at first. So double play candidate here. Um, I should hit and run, but uh, I'm not going to. I'm going to let Parrish swing away. And he lines it right at the third baseman for the first out. So now I am going to hit and run with Kemp. So one down, Thompson at first, got the hit and run on, and Kemp hits it right back to Tanana, whose only play was at first. So two down, Thompson at second. Here's Tony Armas, and a wild pitch sends Thompson to third. So it's a 1-0 count now for Armas, and he strikes out swinging. So a couple of missed opportunities in the second and third to add on. And we head to the top of the fourth. Bobby Gritch, leadoff man, leading off the inning. He strikes out. That's two Ks for Russell. That will bring up Rod Carew. And Rod Carew is going to maybe get an infield hit? Yeah. It was an infield hit back to Russell. And uh, Carew is safe at first. So one down. Carney Lansford's up next. And Russell throws a wild pitch of his own. So Carew in scoring position for Lansford. And he grounds it right to Whitaker for the second out. And it'll be up to John Harris to get that runner in from third. Harris 0 for 5 on the season. And Russell walks him. Which is maybe not a bad idea, walking the lefty to get to the righty. So here's Steve Lubrach who had that error last inning. And he pops it up on the infield, right on the first base line, and Thompson has it for the third out. So we head to the bottom of the fourth. Two nothing still. Hancock leading off. Looking to extend that hit streak. There it is, folks. 13 game hitting streak. That's pretty impressive. So Hancock's on first. Here's Fisk who had a base hit his first time up. We're gonna let him swing away. And he hits a high fly ball to center field. And it falls short. Um, 
at 417 feet. Do we want to tag up at first? I guess we do. And Hancock is safe on the tag up. So Fisk hit it deep enough to dead center that uh, we could get the runner to second. So one down for Brookins. And Brookins blisters it back up the middle for a base hit. And Hancock scores. And you know what? With Brookins speed, we're going to risk it. Oh, and he's out. Miller guns him down at second base. It had to take a perfect throw, and he apparently made it. So two down. Keeping the pressure on Tanana, though. As we're back to the top of the lineup with Whitaker, who pops it up. And it looks like the third baseman caught it, Lansford. And we're going to the top of the fifth. So 3 nothing Detroit. Don Baylor will lead off the inning. And he strikes out swinging. Three Ks for Russell. Dan Ford up next. And Ford's going to hit it down the right field line. And it drops it in front of the wall. And Ford's got himself a double. The third hit against Russell. One down. Ford at second base. And there's a base hit just past Thompson. Will Ford score? No, he has to hold at third. So we are going to... That run doesn't mean much. Um, so we're going to keep the infield back in order to perhaps turn a double play against Miller. Oh, Miller gets a base hit up the middle. So they've strung three hits in a row, and the Angels are on the board. It's three to one. And we're back to Bobby Gritch. So we're going to guard the lines this time. Try to prevent an extra base hit. And Gritch hits it up the middle. And another run scores. So three to two, four hits in a row. And this is a mogling. This is one of those things where you there's nothing you can do. We're going to pull the outfield in uh, because Carew has low power. And if it does drop in, maybe we can get somebody home. Oh, he hits it into the gap. So everybody scores on that one. <laughs> and the uh, Angels take the lead. So the, this is an example of, I don't know if it's a glitch in the game, but um, there, uh, there comes a point in every game where the, um, the uh, offense cannot be stopped. And there's an error by Russell. See what I mean? So first and third. And, I mean, what am I going to do? Just got to let him pitch it. Harris grounds it to short, and it's a double play. But the damage was done as Russell just could not stop the Angels from uh, hit after hit after hit. And we head to the bottom of the fifth. Trammell will lead off the inning. And he walks. So that's a good start. We're going to hit and run with Trammell on first. And Thompson grounds it to second. Trammell safe as uh, the only play was to first. So one down for Parrish. And Tanana leaves a hanging curve. Um, yeah, why not? Trammell's safe at third. Tags up on that 300-foot uh, uh, fly ball to center. So that's going to leave it up to Kemp. Kemp walks. And now Armis is the man. He hasn't done much for us since coming over. He's 3 for 20. So I almost feel like I should just have Bob Baylor in there in center field if he is not capable of getting anything done. As he strikes out with runners at first and third, we head to the top of the sixth. Here's the in-game stats. Tigers were looking pretty good there until the fifth when uh, the wheels came off for Russell. He's had 83 pitches. And uh, Steve Lubrach will lead off. He hits a line drive to center. Armis has it for the first out. Followed by Don Baylor, who takes a third strike looking. Four Ks for Russell. And next up is Dan Ford, who gets a ground ball past Thompson's glove. It's only a single. So that's uh, two for three for Ford today. And then he steals second base. That's impressive to steal uh, with a barely above average speed on Parrish. But he gets the job done. And then Daryl Miller strikes out to end the inning. So to the bottom of the sixth. And Gary Hancock will lead it off. We need a big hit here. 
as uh, Hancock gets his second hit against a lefty today. And we're going to hold him at first. We're not going to risk that. And I really just want to let Fisk swing away. He does hit lefties so well. But he pops it up in this at bat to Lubrach at short. And we ha have to, uh, I guess, let Brooken swing away. And he walks. Three walks, three Ks for Tanana. So we get to the top of the lineup again with Whitaker, who's two for three today with that home run. Oh, and Tanana gets him on a curveball. So two down, and it's going to be up to Trammell, who's uh, one for two and walked today. And he rips it to left, and it's going to be caught by Baylor. So we go to the seventh inning. Russell's at 100 pitches, and we all have two lefties coming up. I really want to see him get through this inning. He's only had one bad inning. Oh, there's a base hit to right. So this will be his last batter with Bobby Gritch, unless he gets two here, I guess. And Miller, who has 74 speed, steals second base on Parrish. That would probably never happen. And Gritch strikes out swinging. So that's going to be it for Russell. Another disappointment. He did not get his 10th win. He had the chance, but he choked. And we have, we're going to bring in Comstock, who pitched three innings of scoreless relief to get the win the other day. And he was, so he was unavailable yesterday. So he's facing Carew, who's only batting 228 versus lefties. And Carew grounds it to first. And that is the second out. We're going to intentionally walk Lansford, who's batting 373, to get to Harris, who's a lefty who does not have a hit all season. So I guess he's due. And Harris hits a fly ball to center. And there's your third out. So good job by Comstock. I was kind of souring on him before that three-inning uh, relief win. So to the bottom of the seventh, Tanana, 102 pitches after this at bat, and Thompson gets his second hit against a lefty. Um, he's been on base uh, pretty much every at bat, right? What is he? He's two for four. I think he was safe on an error. So have I learned my lesson? He's 0 for 3. I have to let him swing away. He's my cleanup hitter. And uh, he's going to fly out to center field. Caught by Miller. And now we're going to do the hit and run again. This is uh, Kemp, who's 0 for 2. Kemp grounds it to short. And we have Thompson at second. I almost feel like pinch running for Thompson, but I also feel like pinch hitting for <laughs> Armis. Armis, who's uh, 0 for 3 with 2 Ks today. And he hits a blooper over the second baseman's head, but it's deep enough for the right fielder to catch it. And we go to the top of the eighth. Tigers losing 4 to 3. And we got a bunch of righties coming up, so uh, good job by Comstock. It's the eighth inning. Man, I really don't want to bring in Tobik or Weaver. We're going to bring in Andy Replogle, Replogle who uh, has pitched well in his two uh, relief appearances for the Tigers this year. Steve Lubrach leads off, and he pops it up. And really the reason why I didn't bring in uh, Tobik or Weaver is that we're losing, so... Um, I don't want to waste their innings. I don't know when they officially get tired and maybe start coughing up more and more runs. So I'm trying to use uh, the long reliever under the circumstances. As he strikes out, Don Baylor. I think it's his third time for Baylor. Yeah, he's got three Ks today. So two down. Here's Dan Ford. And Ford gets his third hit of the game. A triple. So he's got a single, a double, and a triple. So I missed the Rance Mullenix cycle, but if Ford gets another opportunity, uh, he will be going for the cycle. So two outs for Daryl Miller, and Miller strikes out. So other than the triple, 
Uh, a great job by Replogle. And uh, Mark Clear is going to come in here in the eighth. And he is the closer, so he's going to try to get a two-inning save. As uh, this is his 47th game, he's 3-6 and six with a 3.05 ERA. Opponents are batting 233 against him. And he's got 16 out of 22 in save opportunities. So he can be had, and I like that we're starting off with Hancock, who's 2 for 3 today. Both hits versus the lefty Tanana. And he's going to fly out to left field, left center. So there's one down. And, uh, man, I do not want to bat Fisk. We are going to bring in Champ Summers, who had a pitch hit game winning home run uh, earlier in this, uh, against the Rangers. And in this at bat, he's going to fly out to center. And we're going to take out Brookins, and we're going to bring in the lefty Hebner to face. Mark clear. And Hebner takes a third strike looking. So none of my moves are working here. And really, other than that fifth inning where Russell imploded, um, it hasn't been horrible. So we're going to bring in a lefty. And uh, we're not going to waste Capazello. We're going to bring in Schatzader, who he, himself has been overused. And uh, sorry, my phone went off. I apologize for that. So um, he has been struggling. Uh, although I guess he's like, he did give up a run in his last appearance, but he hasn't been too bad prior. So uh, here's Rick Miller leading off the inning against Schatzader. He rips it down the left field line for a double. Uh, what is, I'm sorry, I have to check. What is Shot Sater's, what are lefties batting against Shot Sater now? I mean, two, I mean, basically the same. 269, 270, lefty righty. So that's not good when you can't get your own lefties out. As Gritch grounds it to short, and Miller holds. So one down. Here's Carew. And Carew grounds it to short. That's two down. So we're going to walk, potentially walk uh, Lansford for the second time today to get to Harris, who uh, is 0 for 3, 0 for on the season. And let's see if Shotzi can get him here. Nope. As Harris gets his first hit of the season and drives in the runner from second base, and it's 5 to 3 now. And that's going to be it for Shotzader as uh, he sucks. So we're going to bring in Weaver. Uh, but the bullpen, we, we're, clearly we have real bullpen issues as Lubrach grounds to first, and that's the end of the inning. So the Angels tack on a uh, extra run, make it 5-3, to three, and we're going to have to rally here in the ninth. We've done it before. But Whitaker, who got off to such a great start, strikes out for the first out. Next up is Trammell. And Trammell hits a long fly ball to right center field. Is it gone? Hey, home run for Trammell. Wow. So that's a career high for him. 14 home runs. Um, he's got more home runs than Parrish and more than Kemp. Um, I don't know. That's I'll take it, though. So we uh, close within one. And how about back-to-back -back with uh, JT here? JT grounds it through the middle for a base hit, and we're taking him out for pinch runner. It's going to be Bob Baylor. Second fastest player uh, on our team right now. And, oh man, Parrish just has not been having a good game. we got to let him switch. Should I try to steal? Yes, I think we have to try to steal. They're probably going to pitch out, though, right? Oh, that's a curveball. And it gets thrown out on a curveball. That's impossible. Well, that's the ball game. Got to take chances sometimes as we lose 5-4 to four in the second game of the series. That is a total bummer. Um, we're still only three and a half games back. 
We'll do a little standings watch here. As the Orioles have lost eight in a row, Yankees have lost three, and we're not taking advantage of this opportunity uh, to gain on the Yanks. So uh, let's take a look at transactions, see if anything went down. Uh, nothing of note. So let's pull up the box score and we'll get out of here. And uh, thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe. Again, if you want to hear that Frank Tanana uh, story, I'll put the, um, information, uh, the link uh, to that video in the comments below. That son of a bitch, Frank Tanana, gets the win. He's 15-9. and nine. And Mark Clear gets a 17th save despite giving up the home run to Trammell. Russell takes the loss. Just that one bad inning. He, he's 9-16 and 16 on the season. So uh, Whitaker's 12th and Trammell's 14th. What can I say? That's it from uh, Tiger Stadium. We'll be back tomorrow with Game 3 of the four-game series. Until then, everyone, have a great day.